Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, today I want to talk about the next step in doing those uh, those hinges from that block of wood. But before I do, I actually got a couple of things we're going to talk about. But first thing I want to tell you is that on my panel saw, I promised I would do a demo of how I do my cutting. I have been working on that. That thing has been a pain because I'm trying to get it down to a reasonable amount of time so that people won't fall asleep while I'm trying to show you all this stuff. So anyway, I think I got it about ready to go. I, you have to remember that I don't edit, so therefore, all that rambling, if I forget something, get it out of place, I have to go back and redo the video all in one shoot. So that does add its own challenges. And quite honestly, just like Roy Underhill, uh, sometimes he was pretty rushed to his because he used the same method. He never cut pieces out. He stayed continuous throughout his whole uh, video, and that's the way I do mine. So anyway, Daddy, getting off subject. That that's coming. And by the way, I've decided that I'm going to start calling it my OTB panel saw system. So that would be the OTB PSS. Anyway, uh, that's coming pretty quick, so don't don't worry about it. So let's talk about this real quick, and then I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be on my next project when I get these done. If you remember, this looks familiar. This is the pair of hinges. I told you I was going to get four hinges out of this little block. Five inches by four and a half by six quarter. So I cut it down on the table saw. First thing I did, I cut it in half. Then I resawed it into two pieces plus this centerpiece. So I ended up with four blanks that are right at five eighths of an inch. each in thickness. So now I have all four of these ready to go to the next step. Oops. So, and then what I did is the next step was to re decide what is the face of my hinge. So I decided because now all the measuring, everything we're going to do, you want to make sure whether you're, whether you've got your face against the, the fence of what you're doing or the back of the hinge against there. So now's the time to determine what is going to be the face. And I went ahead, you can see here, I put the pattern on here. This is one hinge, half of it's uh, here, and the other half's over here. This has two fingers on it. This side, this end has one finger. So when I cut it apart on this scroll line, this piece will fit into here, and then that'll become the hinge. So the next step, now that I've laid it out on all four of them, the next step is I want to take and I determine this to be the depth of my fingers in on here because we're actually going to turn these fingers into barrels and by barrels I mean barrels on a on a on a hinge on a butt hinge the barrels all line up on a butt hinge when you put them together with the pin through them so these fingers really become that barrel part of a hinge so, but the critical thing to do here now is you got to get that pin exactly where you want it. And it's got to be dead center here. Uh, I know that on the stick uh, hinges, I told you that you want it to be above center. And on those, because inherently how you're going to shape them was why that was the case. Uh, but this, you want on a barrel hinge, you want this to be rounded perfect. And you want that center pin to be exactly on the center of that radius. So in order to do that, to get this to work nicely, um, I need to make sure that I do mark that dead center on all four of these. And then I will probably drill them on the press, drill press. But I could dr freehand drill these because all that's important is to drill down. Now one thing about drilling the hole, if you look at the blank, I have two fingers here and I have one finger here. I'm only going to drill the hole through here, down in, and then I'll come back from this one and drill up. Oh, again, I'll turn it over and then drill down also. So I have to make sure that when I drill this one, my face is against there. So if I have this against the fence drilling it, I have to make sure this face goes against the drill press. So I would flip it this way. And then that's where I would drill the second one so that they would hit each other. It can You can do it. And like I said, I would probably just do it. I may just do these freehand. Uh, but you don't really need to watch me do that part. After I've done that, then the next step I'll do after that is I will cut out the fingers on the two boards so that then I have uh, the hole drilled in the two fingers 
And then after I cut out all my relief fingers so that they fit together, I will take, cut them apart, and then I'll take this one, fit it into this one, something like this. I'll set them both on a good flat surface and fit the one pin into the other spaced out pin, one pin into two. I have my hole here, so I bring it to the edge and I'll clamp this down while they're perfectly in place. And then using this hole as a guide, I'll drill through this piece here so that then I have my pin will fit in there. And then the last step will be to round these over. And I do that on my belt sander and I'll show you how we're going to do that. But everything from this point forward is critical that I get this pin dead center on here. So that's, you want to make sure you do that part very carefully if you're going to do a barrel type hinge, which is what we're actually doing here. These are going to be barrel hinges. Um, they're still easy to make, but this is the part where you don't want to mess up. You've got to be dead on. So whatever you have to do to make that accurate, make that as accurate as you can. Because the less accurate that is, the more space you're going to end up with between your fingers on the two when they come together you'll see all sorts of gaps around them become more and more gappy as you have to grind more and more wood away to make it work eventually you'll you'll cut you'll get enough worn away around them that it will always work but you want to get it to that point and have it look nice and neat instead so that's the trick so the more you get that centered this is the most critical step of everything you got to do is get that drilled out right centered so make sure you got it drilled out and then when you're done these two pinholes all lined up for your pin to go through it and then you cut out the fingers and then we can come back and do the other pin the center pin and then sand them over now as far as the finger joints on the table saw i am going to use my ankra jig along with my dado stack that i always have on that one table saw set up and if you want to see how i do this if you go back and watch my video, I'll leave a link to it in the description, but you go back to that video where I did a three-finger joint. Basically, I made a box joint using three fingers on any with wood. It didn't matter. And if you watch that, you'll know how to make these because this is basically a three-finger joint where one end fits into the other. So go watch that, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about then, how I did this here. Um, and then once I get ready to do the last step, where I'm going to be sanding off to make them perfectly round. I'll show you how I'm going to set that up so that we can do that on here using a jig. And I'm going to do it on my oscillating belt sander that I have. And that's where I'll probably do this is on there. So stay tuned. That'll be the next time you see these. You won't recognize them as that block of wood anymore at all. So they'll be cut down into their respective. So I'll have eight pieces in all. For each half of the hinge, four of each side, and then we'll get them rounded over so that then we can put them together and they should work. Well, my last step will be is after I've done that, they'll still be kind of boxy on the plane, so I'll probably take and put a profile on the hinge before I'm done too on all of them so they look a little nicer than just being squared up, you know, rounded over or do something. So we'll do that final sanding and shaping after we have a good working hinge. So, and I'll show you what it looks like when we do that last step of sanding them out so that you can then put them together to get a nice fitting hinge. So, hopefully it will go that way. That's my plan. So, I will see you after I get the next step done on these. Now, one last thing I'm going to talk about, and that's my next project. <coughs> a little history on it. This is going to be my next project right here. And this is... Just a little box fan. It has a triangular base with a single pedestal. And I have a lock here so I can tip this fan back and forth. And then I took and put a box on the back with two filters. I had this outer filter, which is just a pre-filter. So I can, usually I let this thing get a little dirty and then I keep using the vacuum cleaner on this to keep it clean. And it makes that other filter last longer so that... Uh, when you finally have to replace that filter, it'll last you probably twice or three times as long. And you can keep using these. They're easy to clean with a vacuum cleaner. <coughs> Excuse me. So I use the two filter system box. What I want to do is this thing also will hang upside down. 
I can turn this upside down. I have a slotted board on my ceiling mounted uh, right over what used to be where the table saw was. Because this hung upside down right above to the one end of where my table saw was. So when I'm working on the table saw, I can turn this on and it filters the air pretty easily right around the table saw right there. Even though my main air filter is over here, that gets what's right there around the table pretty quickly. The problem with this is, and what I've decided is that I want to make it a unitasker. Right now, I can set it on the floor, turn it in any direction, but all it is is a filter. So if I'm doing a lot of sanding in my workbench, I set this over here by my workbench and turn it on and let it suck up. It's kind of a portable air filter. Get it close to where you're making your biggest messes. And But when it's not doing that, it's hanging upside down on the ceiling. And I could tip it about 15 degrees off of uh, straight up and down. And that's the limit of it. Well, I've decided that I want this thing to multitask even more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this box so that it actually is on hinges at the bottom and it'll actually tip away from the box. So that all of a sudden, if I lean it back and I have a gap in here, then air comes in and that thing actually becomes a fan again. Because as a filter, you don't feel a whole lot of air coming out. It doesn't work good as a fan. It only works good as a filter when it's in that mode. So I'm gonna make this so that I can have this thing tilt away from the back of the fan and you then have just air blasting out. And that's the plan, is to turn this into a multifunctional. Also, I'm going to take this 15 degree tilting capability here, and I'm gonna turn that into a full 360 turn by putting a more like a field goal posts and here and here so that this thing can turn. Then when it's hanging up, I'll be able to turn it into fan mode and turn it any direction I want, including toward my bench, from there hanging above my table saw, and I'll be able to blow air directly onto me from it without any problem. And if I needed to do air filtering, I can close it up in just a matter of seconds, point it to whatever direction I want, tip it to whatever angle I want, and be able to use it for air filtering. So, the plan is, is to take a simple box fan and multitask it to do lots and lots of different things and easily. So that's my next project. I'm going to turn this into that and I have to make a mounting plate for it up there so that when I want to put it up there, I'll be able to easily. And when I get it all done, I'll show that to you. But you can expect to see the finished product on that sometime in the near future, hopefully, because that's what I'm kind of been working on in my head. And I'm now getting ready to start building the pieces I need to put that whole thing together to make it what I've been telling you. Anyway, enough rambling. This is my next project. That's the one I'm still the panel saw. I promise uh, that video is still coming. But stay tuned for the next step on these hinges because they're coming along nicely. Oh, one more thing real quick. Remember my stick hinge, the last one I did with these? Well, I was looking at these and I was thinking, uh, I had one person that really didn't think they would be that strong. And I thought I would mention that if you take it, now this hurts. Because every time I do that, it's smacking my knuckle. But that thing is not going to break. And this one, this has the bamboo skewer in it. This is the one that's set to 90 degrees. But I don't think I'd be afraid of using these hinges for either a door or a lid to a box without any worry about failure than failing or something like that. They actually are very durable. So uh, if you haven't seen that one of how I made those, uh, it's stick hinges. I'll leave a link in the description or you can just find that by doing a search on my uh, YouTube home channel and you can find it just by that phrase, stick hinges. So anyway, stay tuned. That's everything I had to talk about today. I wanna thank you for coming by any comments, any ideas, any suggestions or thoughts about any of this, let me know. Uh, but I didn't want to go too long. I've been almost a week since I did a video, so I thought I'd at least do this for you. And like I said, that's coming pretty quick. So uh, anyway, leave your comments and thoughts. I always like to read them. It's enjoyable. If you like this video, you learned something here, 
hit that like button. It lets me know that I must be doing something right. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. And thanks, the OTB Thinker. We'll talk to you again. Well, actually, I'm the Rambling Russ this time. I forgot to turn my sign. There we go. Sorry, Larry, I forgot to turn it. Anyway, this was a rambling rust. You do come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again soon.